Hi, good citizens of North Dakota. I'm Alan Repke of Inform TV, Alexandria, Minnesota. Today I'm putting together just a half hour program on finance that you, the good people of North Dakota, uh, have an exclusive opportunity to be the most bank protected citizens in the United States, maybe in, in the world. And what I'm doing with this program, I'm making this program available to Beck TV as well as North Dakota Public TV that hopefully shows it in Minnesota as well because we need to see of, of a unique situation in finance that only you good citizens of North Dakota have available to you. And I'm telling you as an analyst, as an observationist, as a person that was uh, traveled to six continents, uh, was in China the day after normalization, uh, watched the Berlin Wall, uh, crawled up there and looked at, in the Russian side um, shortly after before uh, people were shot trying to get out of that country. So I have a unique look at what the world is up to and have tracked it for a lifetime. And what I'm telling you, the good citizens of North Dakota, I want to make sure every citizen of North Dakota has a safety banking account. And I'm not talking big dollars. Uh, I'm talking maybe from a standpoint, it's up to you what you want to put there. But I think whether you're low income, senior citizens or whatever, if you want a safety account, that you can tap if your local bank uh, fails or this whole financial system finally faces reality and falls. Remember, we've got the war in Ukraine, we've got China wanting to evade Thailand, uh, 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 Taiwan, the only place that makes key components of chips for a computer system. We have uh, North Korea now with the capabilities to put a nuclear warhead on a ballistic missile and hit any state in the uh, lower 48. Um, we have Islam is always a threat and the tr typical dictators scattered around the world are always bringing uncertainty to our world. But in my lifetime, who I lived through the uh, Cuban uh, Missile Crisis, I think by far in my lifetime that started in 1950, we are in more avenues of peril than the world has been since 1950. And that's saying a lot. And what I want you, the unique people of North Dakota, to do is to open a checking or savings account in the Bank of North Dakota. And what I'm getting at here, folks, the only ones that can open an account in the Bank of North Dakota is who? You have to be a resident of the state of North Dakota. And you have the ability to do that. You have to drive to Bismarck and open that account. So I suggest you do it on an amount of money that you want as a safe haven if all things fail. And if I was still a large farmer, sugar beet grower, corn grower, soybean grower, uh, if I had a major check that you just received from Crystal Sugar uh, or a big grain check or sold a bunch of cattle or just got the final payment on a major uh, um, contract that you just filled as a contractor or a businessman, I would take a chunk of money and go out there, and I'll give you an example. You had a million dollars you just got from American Crystal Sugar with uh, the situation of how strong farmers are today. I'd take a million dollars, drive out to Bismarck, North Dakota, and put it in a checking or savings account in uh, the bank in North Dakota. And what I'm getting at here, people, all the money from the state agencies flow into the Bank of North Dakota. And it's been a successful safe bank since uh, 1919, I believe it is, or it's just a little over 100 years old anyway. And so if you have a financial institution that's uh, uh, 
stood the test of time even through the depression and you have state government managing it protecting it why wouldn't you want to put an account in there well of course you want to and i don't care if it's it's a thousand bucks or 500 bucks or fifty thousand this is the best way for you good citizens of north dakota to protect your finances and and when you have a situation like this do it uh, we sit here in minnesota side with a 19 uh, billion dollar surplus and all we're our governor and our legislator all they're doing is to try to get it in to their friends to spend as quick as possible in other words uh, drive inflation rather than slow it down why what i'm recommending to you good citizens of north dakota you slow things down by putting uh, a, a chunk of your safety cash in the bank in north dakota and some may say well al that isn't even FDIC insured. Well, I believe uh, having a state bank like you folks do in North Dakota, and you have your governor, uh, attorney general, ag commissioner, um, and legislature that can see that that bank is funded. I, I, I just read recently how uh, I get, what is it, Bergram's uh, newsletter, and how, what are you trying to get down to a flat tax of 1.5%? Being your legislature is still going, at least I believe they are, I would make sure that your governor and legislature have the ability, if they need money to guarantee your funds in the bank in North Dakota, your personal funds or your company's funds, that they can raise the tax or even a month or two or a quarter to see that you have a, a safe flow of money and I'm not doing it in a way that you guys just take it out uh, uh, if the system crashes you leave that in there and you get by as prudently as conservatively as you can but remembering you have money in the Bank of North Dakota that your state government has been watching for over a hundred years. They can raise taxes. They can't print money like Uncle Sam does, but it, they can raise taxes. And when you look at everybody else going to the bigger banks, the, when I look at the financials of the North Dakota, uh, the Bank of North Dakota, I see they're, they're going down. And yes, I understand that, uh, uh, part of um, the, at least the present mission of the bank in North Dakota is not to compete with uh, the commercial banks. But in reality, when we look at the disastrous things that are going on with commercial banks, and we're not seeing that every bank in the United States is required to post their assets outside, and when we have media uh, sources, like I watch CBS is what is it, Jill Schlesinger. I, I don't think I've ever seen a more despicable presentation on what's going on. She referred to somebody hitting, uh, somebody hit the brakes and, and you hit your head and, and the windshield of the car. What we're going through, uh, uh, people, is very uh, easy to explain. Journalists can't do it. Uh, you and I can, but the reality when our incompetent uh, Fed, an incompetent uh, Treasury, an incompetent FDIC, and our incompetent Congress and Presidents uh, of allowing interest, the Fed fund rate to go to zero, basically. And finally, watch this inflation do thing drowned all of us and finally react well we got to do something now and they went to this extreme that uh and didn't tell the people or i don't even think they even understood it themselves i damn well did and i hope my, uh, most of you when you suddenly raise the rate of bonds the bond value goes down and if there's a run on the bank 
what do you what do they have to do just like uh, SVB did they had to sell mortgage securities they had to sell uh, federal bonds notes bills and when you do that when they were locked into a ridiculously low rate for home mortgages a ridiculously low rate uh, uh, for US bonds bills and notes they purchased they were screwed in fact when we look at some of the commercial banks right now I believe uh, uh, I read where uh, US Bank where uh, I've got uh, my limited funds in a checking account there because it's no matter where you go you can use the use the funds without out a fee that their assets uh, if you looked at them realistically are 10% less and and the reality when I think when we look at the fact interest rates are going up it means these home prices uh, have to go down and have to go down substantially and what does that mean when a bank is saying their assets are government bonds and and uh, uh, home mortgages they have to devalue their assets and one of the things when I, I look at this whole situation with uh, uh, Credit Suisse uh, as a kid we were always told well the best place to put your money is in a bank of uh, Switzerland because they won't tell Uncle Sam or anybody that you got it there and you don't have to pay taxes and da 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 in fact uh, when I was there in 69 all, almost opened an account there but uh, the tour I was on suddenly we had to go someplace so I had to uh, leave it alone but uh, suddenly we have one of the behemoth banks of the world UBS buying Credit Suisse and when you look at wealth management uh, when you go on the internet of course everything is subject to what you look at but the reality when I look at the Washington Post and other newspapers um, their show assets under management uh, uh, UBS at like three trillion dollars under uh, asset management uh, Credit Suisse had about 1.4 to 1.5 under management and now suddenly uh, US uh, UBS buys their largest competitor in Switzerland the second biggest bank in Switzerland uh, they do it for a lousy 3.25 billion dollars in other words uh, the assets worldwide that what our banking institutions are using as book value and our bank examiners are accepting all these assets are less value that's why I'm getting back to the Bank of North Dakota the Bank of North Dakota you're sitting a lot like Putin you have cattle you have grain uh, you have uh, uh, sugar and a whole list of businesses that are basically providing a raw material to the world what you produce in North Dakota uh, and when you look at gas and oil just think of the similarities of what the despicable Putin is up to uh, and we say we were gonna smoke him out we we're gonna freeze him out with sanctions he controls assets that are in demand and uh, um, that's what's kept this despicable war going that our number one concern is defense is to get instead of 31 uh, Abraham tanks into there we should demanding that our Congress sends 310 and whether they truck them in from uh, other locations in Europe or fly them in with C-17s we have to see that by June 1st Ukraine has the assets to take care of and drive Putin out of Ukraine uh, the Crimean Peninsula and all of eastern uh, Ukraine and it's back to what we're talking about here finances we don't do that people 
uh, Katie by the bar the door. We don't need to spend 800 and either 42 billion or 56 billion in this year's budget for defense to play war games. We have a real war going on that is threatening all of mankind's population and we have to do something. And when we look back to our finances here with the Bank of North Dakota, just think of how safe your resources are, you good citizens of North Dakota. When you can go out, drive to uh, Bismarck, get a room, uh, look around town, have some fun, and leave a million dollar check, a five hundred dollar check, or a ten thousand or twenty five thousand dollar check of money that you want as a safe reserve. No citizen of the United States is in as good a position of, as you people. And so Alan Repke of Alexandria, Minnesota is telling you get the job done. Yet at the same time, uh, you have Hoven that was in the banking industry most of his life. You got Kramer, Senator Kramer, that's that is like a correspondent on Fox Business and Fox Politics. Uh, why isn't he telling about what the good citizens of North Dakota can and should be doing? All your congressional delegation, all your legislatures, and what about your two parties? Are your two parties going to send this out rather than letting some journalists plagiarize uh, the sound work that I have done to see that you guys are taken care of if all things fail? Now I want to do a little quote for you so you don't think it's just my words. When you Google, is the Bank of North Dakota FDIC insured? The Bank of North Dakota is not FDIC insured. And then it goes on, in contrast to most commercial banks, North Dakota Bank is not a member of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. North Dakota Century Code 60910 provides that all North Bank of North Dakota deposits are guaranteed by the full faith and credit of the state of North Dakota. And with your assets, people, of oil, gas, cattle, grain, sugar, uh, computer people, industrial construction people, just think that guarantee is way better than FDIC. And that's why I want you to act on this. But at the same time, I want you to contact your governor, your congressional delegation, your legislators about this. You need to see that either by executive order, I don't know if Bergram can do that, or your legislature, uh, that they put a minimum of four new branches of the bank in North Dakota. And I'm talking, for example, Grand Forks gets one, Fargo gets one, and I don't know if it's Dickinson or Williston or whatever, but you get my drift. I, I would not recommend more than six. I think four would be more than adequate because I'm not here to try to take uh, uh, business away from commercial banks. I want them to get their act together. But you people have such an incredible incredible opportunity to have your money in a bank. Now, well, what I'm getting at here, this USB and uh, USB, SVB bank, well, people are standing outside. They couldn't get into their safety deposit box so they had $10,000 in cash in their safety deposit box, could they? And from a standpoint, maybe you've got a gun safe uh, and that nobody can carry out, you would, uh, I would recommend you keep some cash on hand there. But the reality is um, they're not, their policy is just a check or a savings account. I would also change that uh, if I can see what the, uh, 
that you would ha could have a cash card. And I don't want you to use this cash card for every day. Oh, now I can buy something when we got inflation out of control. This is your cash card when you uh, get to the point or the system melts down to the point you want to use some of that money. But I would tell you good citizens of North Dakota with this very unique situation, your money of last resort is the money you put in the bank in North Dakota. But to make it handy, you need four more branches. And uh, then you're covered. Then your governor, your congressional delegation, your legislators, even your county commissioners are looking out for your best interests. But make sure when we're talking uh, uh, about this issue of protecting the funds uh, of the good citizens of North Dakota that it's available to you. And, and don't let these business shows saying, well, we've got it taken care of now because we've got um, uh, UBS buying Swiss Bank. Uh, we've always had our five um, mammoth banks that uh, um, that even got bigger after uh, the disaster of 2008. In fact, uh, I was reading here someplace, if I, if I have it open, where the J.P. Morgan Chase, they, their assets are 3.9 trillion. It said in the Washington Post, their assets is, are, are as big as the entire economy uh, of France. <laughs> and so when we look at financing people and we look at the unique situation you good people of North Dakota have, don't let anybody talk you out of opening a, an account in the bank of North Dakota. And don't let your legislature legislator and governor congressional uh, people not open four more branches so you have access to do it. It's ridiculous to drive out there but if I was a big farmer yet and I had a million dollar check from American Crystal or a bunch of cattle or some oil dealings or a major construction contract that you got paid for and you've been frugal and don't need the money I would have a checking account or a savings account in the bank in North Dakota. Well, North Dakota, what you just watched was just the tip of the iceberg of the issues and in-depth uh, review that I want to give to not only you people in North Dakota, but Minnesota, South Dakota, Iowa, Nebraska, Wyoming, and Montana. Because that's what it takes to get a person like myself with my own channels out to cover the issues. So when something pops up, I have immediate access to the good people that are concerned about what's going on. Whether it's banking, farm policy, foreign policy, the war in Ukraine. Beck TV started because they weren't happy with what the networks are doing. I got involved in TV and radio because I wasn't happy with what's going on. And now it's way worse than when I started in radio years ago of doing a weekend program called Ag Analysis as well as doing some TV work that uh, in Alexandria as well as a, uh, a little bit in Minneapolis as well as the Fargo area. I want, at a minimum, a channel in the Red River Valley uh, that covers uh, the full Red River Valley. So BEP TV, they can bring additional people on like myself, but right now, as well as public North Dakota Public TV, but right now, we're in a situation where we have to see that something changes. And the subject matter I just covered yesterday, the 20th of March, and today's the 21st of March. We need to see that the state of North Dakota, because of the bank in North Dakota, that only citizens of North Dakota can have accounts in. It's the only bank 
in our 58 states that has a bank where the business of the state runs through plus uh, individuals and corporations or companies can put money in there. I'm saying that I want you, the good people of North Dakota that are watching this program, whether it's on Beck TV or North Dakota Public TV, that you allow Hoven to sit down with me and Hoven being the man of being the president of the Bank of North Dakota for seven years as the starting point when you come into a bank uh, in North Dakota or any place in the United States they have a quarterly breakdown of their assets. This nonsense I watched Amanpour and said well nobody can keep track. Yes we have to keep track of our finances. We have to keep track of where we're putting our money and we want to see uh, that I can talk to Kramer, uh, Bergram, Hoven about the bank in North Dakota posting a quarterly a placard once you enter the bank uh, and sent to all depositors five days or six days, seven days after a quarter closes to show where their assets are and to give a realistic value either increase of their assets I'm talking their government bonds or their farmland or their home mortgages or their car loans and so on down the list but just a simple glance that any um, person with a high school degree can understand the simple economics uh, this morning I, I looked at the Washington Post again and a couple other newspapers and now they're saying hey this financial mess what happened with Credit Suisse and uh, uh, UBS is probably just the start of the mess we also found out in 2008 but I think things are much much worse now than they've been since the Great Depression and that's what I'm saying. Let's let's get ahead of this thing. Let's let's make sure that we address our debt. And the only way we can address our debt, people, we either got to pay it off or we got to write it off. And that's what Inform TV is all about. That's what you want from Beck TV and and North Dakota Public TV. That you have somebody in. Uh, independent talking about the issues that's actually experienced the issues. I want to talk about housing. Uh, um, I want to talk about all the issues of the day based on what? My experience, my dealing with these issues. And if you want to see that happen, support Inform TV at Box 333, Alexandria, Minnesota, and make sure I can do a series of programs on Beck TV and North Dakota TV. So you're suddenly truly informed. Thanks for listening. I'm Alan Repke.